Hello and welcome to another episode of Food Tech 101. Uh, following on from our last video where we made cornflakes at home, uh, which is a really surprisingly simple method, I thought I'd follow that up with how to make bran flakes at home. Bran flakes are one of my favourite cereals. Um, have that with some raisins, a bit of soy milk, it's delicious. Um, but they are quite expensive. And when you check the ingredients of a lot of these things, they have a surprising amount of ingredients. So I'm going to show you how to make bran flakes using some really simple, high quality ingredients. And as with most of our recipes, it's probably easier than you might think. Before we get started, just do me a quick favor. Click that subscribe button and hit that little bell icon. So you'll be the first to know whenever I upload a new video. Okay, let's get to it. For this recipe, you will need 150 grams of wholemeal flour, 80 grams of wheat bran, two tablespoons of ground flaxseed, a tablespoon of malt extract, a tablespoon of sunflower oil, half a teaspoonful of salt, and roughly 100 mils of water, although you may need slightly less or slightly more. Now, like with most of these recipes on Food Tech 101, we try and keep things simple. Now, I don't know exactly how they make actual bran flakes, but I know there's quite a lot of ingredients in there. But we're using very simple ingredients and a relatively simple process, which is going to be a little bit similar to how we made the cornflakes. So if you want to have a check back and see how you made the cornflakes, the process is very similar. First of all, I'm going to combine all the dry ingredients. So in with the flour, in with the bran, in with my flaxseed. This is a really healthy, nutritious dish. In with the salt. Before we go any further, I'm just gonna mix all the dry ingredients together. I think while I follow this video up with how to make all bran, another one of my favorites, which will be a bit similar, but the process uh, ingredients will be a little bit similar, but the process is a little bit different. So I've combined all the dry ingredients perfectly well. Now it's time for the liquid element. So here I'm going to add roughly 100 milliliters of water. Now I'm looking for a very stiff dough. So if, if I need to add a touch of water to kind of make that bring all together, be free to add a, a couple more spoonfuls of water if necessary. All wholemeal flour is not the same, so it kind of absorbs water at a different rate. So I don't want to say an exact amount and then your flour might be a little bit different, it might absorb at a slightly different rate, but we're looking for quite a stiff dough. So I'm going to add my fat or my oil straight into the water, and then I'm going to add the water straight into the mixture. And while that's in there, I'm just going to add my spoonful, a generous spoonful of malt extract. This stuff smells delicious. I love the smell of malt. So all the dry ingredients and the wet ingredients are now there. So now I'm just going to start to mix it together. Now again, I am looking for something that forms a dough. So if it looks a bit too dry, I'm just going to add a bit more water as necessary. So I have a little bit of extra water here now, just if necessary, because I do need to form a dough. So now I've added about another 20 milliliters, and it's starting to come together. And the interesting thing is, it actually smells already quite a lot like bran flakes. It's a very dry mixture still, and I do want it dry. So now I've added about another 50 milliliters of water, and I think I'm getting towards what I'm after. So in total now, I think I've added about 150 mils of water, and that's about as much as I think I need to add. We've got a stiff mixture, but it's now, the more I stir, starting to come together to form a dough. So I'm just gonna mix this for about two or three minutes, and maybe get my hands involved to bring it together to form a dough. And here we go. Our mixture's come together as a dough. Now you may find you'll get a dough if you use slightly less water or slightly more. If for whatever reason you put in a bit too much water and it gets a bit too soft, just add a touch of, a touch of additional flour and that'll absorb the additional water. 
What we're looking for is a fairly stiff, solid, but still quite pliable doll. So you can kind of vary the flour to water ratio. And if it gets a little bit too wet, don't worry. A little bit of flour absorbs the water. And if it's too dry, a little touch of water uh, will soften it back up again. But this is what we're, roughly speaking, we're looking for. So we have a nice, soft, pliable, but still fairly thick dough. Let's go to the next stage. Okay, we have our dough. It's nice, fairly soft and pliable, but a little stiff at the same time. So now we have to flatten it out. So to do that, I'm just gonna bang it down a little bit just to kind of get it going. And this stage is to get it to flatten out as much as possible, because here is where we make it the thickness, or rather the thinness, of actual flakes. So onto grease with paper. On top of that grease with paper, I'm gonna place another sheet of grease with paper. I'm going to roll it as flat as it will go. And the idea is, ultimately, it should be able to fill this entire space. So let's get rolling. And that should just about do it. Finally, before I take the sheet off, I'm just gonna use my hands to flatten it out. That gives me a really good indication. If it's flat all the way around, the hands are very sensitive for that. Make sure it's nice and flat and even. I wanna make sure that this whole sheet cooks or bakes rather at the same rate. I'm just gonna smooth it down and it's doing this actually strangely satisfying. And then, so I'll put a reveal. There we have it. A completely smooth, flat surface. Perfect. So we're virtually done now. What we have here, in essence, is a pre-baked giant bran flake. The biggest bran flake in the world, probably. Uh, probably not, not maybe. Uh, all we're gonna do now is bake this uh, at 150 degrees for about 50 minutes. So 150 degrees is a relatively low heat, enough to bake it, but it'll bake slowly, because we need to bake slowly and harden. So we're gonna bake it slowly for 50 minutes, take it out, and once it comes out, it should be nice and fully baked, and then we're gonna break it up into flake-sized pieces. And we're back, and it's out of the oven. So what we have here is our giant baked sheet. What we're gonna do now is we're gonna break it up into little pieces, into flakes, and then we're gonna put it back into the oven on a low heat for a little bit longer. So it's baked now, but I think you can do a little bit more baking. So I'm just gonna break it up into sheets first of all. Break it up into smaller pieces and then bake it in the oven for a little bit longer so it can dry out and harden a bit more. And here we are. We've broken our pieces down into flake size chunks, as it were. Now the parts that are towards the end that are really thin, they're really crispy already. The parts that are towards the center are a little bit thicker. They're gonna need a little bit more cooking first so they can crisp right up. So now, I've got them into their flake size shapes. I'm gonna put them back in the oven, 150 degrees, maybe 140, there or thereabouts, play with that, for about another half an hour so they dry out and harden completely. So here we have it, our brown flakes. Now first things first, these things look and smell completely legit, I can't I'm actually salivating. They look and smell completely genuine. Obviously some of the flakes are a little bit bigger, the, the, the size is a little bit, this, that's not, isn't exactly the same, but in terms of look and smell, they look like brand flakes you get out of the package. I've paired mine with a few raisins. Okay, let's taste and see. These taste legit. something I always think well, okay how could I improve it so I think that's come out 
pretty successful. They look like, like uh, brown flakes, they smell like brown flakes, they taste like brown flakes. However, if I was going to improve them, these are the modifications I'd make if I was going to make it again. One, I try and roll them out even thinner. Towards the very edges, the parts where the rolling pin rolls off, the thinnest parts, uh, they're, they're the, the kind of thickness you want from a flake. I think some parts are a little thick, perhaps. Um, you, don't, you don't mind it so much for your green crunching through, but if I, was, if I was going to do it again, I'd try and roll it out a little bit thinner. Also, I think real brown flakes have sugar added to them, so I'd maybe add maybe two spoonfuls of brown muscovado sugar, or soft brown sugar. Uh, I'd probably add, add about two spoonfuls of sugar to that. And maybe, to give it a little bit more of a lighter crunch, I'd add maybe an extra two spoonfuls of oil. But apart from that, I think that's a really, really successful art form, because they look, smell, and taste. Mmm. Good. Like brown flakes. I think it's gonna be one of my successful cereal remakes ever, I think. These really do taste like brown flakes. And they're really, really healthy. I made them with whole grain flour, um, more bran than you get in the real brown flakes, no sugar, uh, and it's with a bit of malt extract and linseed. So they are really, really healthy. A really, really good outcome, I think. Mm. And there we have it, bran flakes. That's a really, really, for me, a really, really successful outcome. They look like bran flakes, they smell like bran flakes, they taste like bran flakes, and you've known, you know what all the ingredients are, completely, totally healthy. Healthier, in fact, than the actual packet bought, store bought brand flakes. That's a really, really good outcome and much easier, admit it, much easier than you thought it was gonna be. Once again, thanks for watching Food Tech 101. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Until next time, my name is Mr. Lionbird, but you, yeah, you can call me sir. Of things we know